today I was going to start off with uh, French Tarash uh, and uh, and then move on to the five games from there. Um, so I wanted to just uh, jump right into it and get into this theory. Um, the French Tarash is defined by uh, one uh, you know one e four e six d four d five knight d two. Um, this is different than the mainline uh, French, which is knight to c three. Um, with uh, knight to d2, it's kind of a more passive um, uh, opening. Um, basically, it'll play, place pressure on d5 and defend e4. Um, uh, this is the main line. Um, but here, really, you're just sort of um, putting pressure on uh, you know e4 uh, in, in case uh, in case black takes it. If black takes uh, uh, e4, it'll transpose into the main line French where the um, where black takes e4. Uh, but overall, I mean, it has some small kind of positional differences uh, that differentiate it from uh, from um, uh, the knight to c3. Um, playing into its line, so d takes e4, knight takes e4, obviously, like, leads to the same transposition. Um, knight f6, e5. Hey, good morning, Aphelion. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Um, yeah, so, so e5, uh, <clears throat> knight fd7, bishop d3, c5, c3. And, uh, and basically, this is sort of transposed into a normal French. Um, the placement of the knight is uh, different on um, uh, d2 than c3, um, but it's helpful that it uh, basically you know allows c3 to be played. Oh, no problem, no problem, Aphelion. I mean, it's it makes. I mean, it, I always appreciate you guys being here and, and uh, you know being here for the stream. But um, yeah, never never worry about stuff like that. I'm I'm always fine. Um, yeah, uh, knight d2, c3. Knight c6, knight e2, c takes d4, c takes d4, and uh, and here basically white has this pawn structure with the c5 pawn having traded off for the c3 pawn. Um, we go, we've gone over it a bunch of times, but um, you know as uh, ideas behind the chess opening by Fine uh, talks about um, whether or not white can maintain this d4 e5 structure is really the the um, important thing in determining how well a uh, French opening went. Um, with knight d2, uh, there's efficiency in that the, um, uh, after e5, knight e7, um, c3 can be comfortably played without, um, without uh, knight d2 or without the knight on c3. Um, normally in the French, you know, there can be kind of maneuverings where the knight plays to b5 and then plays c3. Um, but overall, uh, you know, this, this ends up being pretty strong for white. Uh, knight c6, knight e2, c takes d4, c takes d4, f6, e takes, knight takes. And uh, and here basically white has a pretty good position. Um, this is uh, you know this is interesting. Uh, I don't know if knight f3 is probably the move here, um, but basically uh, this um, you know this opening ends up being pretty um, uh, pretty generally interesting. Um, it's uh, it's basically you know the main the main purpose since uh, since the knight doesn't really have that much purpose on c3 other than to retake on e4 um, is uh, is to um, to be able to play c3. Uh, knight takes e4 and then c3 coming next move. Um, bishop d7, knight f3, bishop c6, bishop d3, knight d7, castles. Uh, and basically here, um, you know, white is looking pretty, I, I guess I would say white's looking pretty solid. Um, this d4 faces off favorably against this e6 pawn, and uh, it's, um, yeah, overall pretty strong for white. Uh, let's keep going. Um, knight g3, bishop e7, rook e1, castles, c3, rook e8, bishop f4. And uh, you know, pressure is being exerted um, by the uh, by the bishop on the f the c7 pawn. Um, but there's not really any uh, big um, you know there's there's not really any uh, you know big center big French center here. Uh, this still works out well for white. I'm sure that the analysis is favorable to white. Um, but there's no real pressure uh, you know being exerted by e5. Um, you know the knight is comfortably developed on f6 and e5 isn't defending that square. Um, anyways. Uh, e4, e6, d4, d5, knight d2, knight takes, and here basically, um, you know, nothing too exciting. Uh, the knight is on e4. This could have come out of one knight, or this could have come out of three knight c3 or three knight d2. Um, and ideas like c3 and bishop f4 are here. Uh, options here: um, castles, gn f6, knight g3, bishop e7, rook e1. And, uh, and here, basically, you know, it's um, a good position for white. Uh, it's just better development, straightforward. Um, and unlike, uh, you know, the normal um, French where, uh, you know, these pawns will get neutralized, but uh, the uh, d5's e6 structure will be maintained, um, this, uh, you know, this structure basically is, is uh, solid for white. Um, trading the e-pawn for the d-pawn is not terrible. Uh, trading, you know, and that's consistent with what happens in the French exchange. 
Um, except in this particular case, uh, the French structure is better for um, for white. Uh, in the French exchange, you know, the uh, the e6 pawn ends up on d5 um, and creates symmetry. Here, white just has a better centralized pawn. Um, you know, the the main point of the French is is um, not to uh, you know basically not to trade off uh, the d the d pawn or the e pawn um, for the uh, d4 or, C, or e5 uh, pawns. But to play moves like e, uh, f6 and c5, uh, so that the um, uh, you know so the pawns are undermined in that way. Um, anyways, uh, continuing on with this, um, uh, we can look at uh, basically we can look at other lines out of knight d2. Um, c5 is a pretty aggressive response, uh, but again, comfortably uh, c3 can be played. Here, e takes d5 is the most common, basically transposing it into a French exchange position. Um, uh, or, you know, if the queen takes, then, um, uh, then it's not a French exchange. But here it is a, a French exchange. Um, it, with a c3 here, it'll become that full um, French exchange structure with symmetrical pawns on d4 and d5. Uh, knight gf3, knight c6, bishop b5, bishop d6, d takes, pawn takes. Um, yeah, this is the Tarash French. Uh, we just wanted to go through, uh, you know, I just wanted to get into the Tarash French before um, going into the uh, uh, full... Um, uh, I just want to go into the Trash French uh, before we go into the five game review. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, this is um, this is you know it's interesting. It's new theory for me mostly. I've always played the mainline French, but um, it has some positional things that are different. Uh, specifically in positions where uh, e takes d5 isn't the move that's played, or uh, d takes e4 isn't the move that's played. Um, it has uh, you know unique things uh, that are characteristics of the French exchange. As opposed to the, um, uh, you know, as opposed to the regular French. Uh, here, something like c5, e takes d5. Uh, you know, um, uh, just just uh, going through the options here. D takes e4 is the transpositional move. Um, other moves for Black here uh, are knight f6, c5, bishop e7, uh, or knight to c6. Um, of these, I would avoid knight to c6. So that gets into the normal issue with the French, uh, where the c pawn is getting blocked in by the knight. Um, instead, uh, you know, I would basically play something along the lines of knight f6, e5, knight fd7, bishop d3. And here, you know, you basically have the bishop focused on the king side, and, uh, and the c5 pawn exerts pressure on the, um, the d4 pawn, trying to disrupt the structure. Uh, but the key difference being c3 um, uh, provides defense on this d4 pawn. Um, so the normal undermining moves c5, and pawn takes, you know, basically pawn takes d4 prior to when a pawn can take back on d4. Uh, isn't playable in this uh, trash position. Um, basically, this trades into an opening that's relatively equal, and uh, and I think things are pretty much good here. Uh, knight e2, c takes d4, c takes d4, uh, and uh, basically, um, you know, white's looking like uh, he's in you know pretty good shape here. Uh, Black's lost one of his key resources in terms of being able to play c5 to undermine the d4 square, and uh, you know even though this center is relatively constricted for white, um, this still provides a favorable analysis. Uh, you know, a better eval. Um, basically, it's a small secure advantage. Uh, you know, this is a much less volatile French. Um, white has much less sort of, you know, much less in potential to gain here. Um, but overall, as a French position, um, this is a good, uh, this is a good general opening. Um, knight f6, e5, knight fd7, c3. Uh, this, you know, this structure is uh, is pretty easy to maintain. Um, you know, you've constricted kind of the opening, uh, you know, you basically have um, uh, development closer to the king and not as far out for white. But, um, but overall, uh, this pawn structure, which I consider to be probably the most important thing um, in the French, uh, you know, in the French opening, uh, can be maintained. So overall there, I, I guess I would say, you know, uh, it's a pretty conservative way to play it. Uh, it generally doesn't lead to many, you know, aggressive black wins. But you gain a small positional advantage, and you're able to hold the d4, e5 pawns easier. Um, so in the middle game, basically, you will have uh, you will have slightly better chances, um, but not much better chances, and without much uh, without much volatility, uh, as is consistent with um, the uh, uh, you know it, it doesn't basically doesn't contain the volatility that normally happens with the mainline French. Um, here, this is uh, is a situation in which white center gets liquidated. Um, I, you know, I think that black basically has the better center here, but um, I guess, uh, you know, in terms of threats on potential backward pawn e6, um, knight b3, you know, it's sort of, and castling, uh, I guess pressure can be put on this e6 pawn that makes it compensating uh, for, uh, for issues uh, in, in terms of uh, white's pawn structure. 
Um, you know, potentially development to bishop f4. That's not usually possible in the French exchange. And uh, yeah, um, yeah. So let's take a look. Uh, let's look at this. Um, uh, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, French. You know, French is a tough opening. Knight d2, I think, though, is a much more conservative way to play it. If you want to steer out of the theory-heavy French games, um, playing the knight d2 uh, uh, thing um, uh, is is basically important. Um, playing knight d2, you know, is is a way that you can play the um, the uh, opening more conservatively, and uh, and basically be fine. Um, I think moves like c3, you know, are really what kind of support this uh, this general opening. And trading the e pawn for the d pawn is not a bad trade for white. Um, yeah, no problem, Leaf. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for stopping by, at least. Um, so yeah, uh, don't worry about it. Um, uh, knight d7 uh, is an idea. Uh, bishop d3 is also an idea. Um, and uh, and basically, I think I think White will be in a pretty good place. Uh, e4, e6, d4, d5, knight d2. Going over the main lines, I, I guess I'd probably want to play out one of each. Um, knight f6, c5, bishop e7. Uh, we've gone over a knight f6 line and, a, and an e7 line. Uh, let's take a look at bishop e7. Here, uh, white can just sort of do normal developing moves. Um, he's not very ambitious in the sense that, um, you know, basically that the opening is going to be, um, uh, you know, the opening is a key part of this game. Um, and, uh, and you know, the pieces aren't going to be, um, you know, supporting the further, uh, more advanced squares in the, uh, in the center. Um, like, uh, like d5 is basically not getting attacked by anything by the white pawn here. Uh, it ends up being, uh, you know, controlled favorably by the e4, or by the, uh, e6 pawn relative to the e4 pawn. Um, black's control over d5 is better relative to the normal, um, the normal French. But in response, white gets c3, and basically everything's fine. Um, okay. Knight f6, e5, knight fd7, bishop d3. And uh, and basically here, I think white has a better you know white has a has the better okay. side of this. Um, hey, thank you very much uh, for the follow, uh, uh, Matt Yop. Um, thank you. Um, but yeah, so basically here, you know, c3, bishop b1, queen c2, you know, is a potential attack. Um, but you know, uh, this is an easier center to support um, with uh, you know with c3. Uh, the undermining move c5 is is made a lot less useful than it sometimes is. Um, anyways. Uh, here, I guess I would just generally say, like, you know, um, White is trading uh, his, um, uh, White is trading his, uh, like, a forward development. Um, Knight c3 is a much more ambitious move, offers more chance, probably better winning chances for White. Uh, you know, uh, many um, times in the French, uh, Knight b5 is played. That's not an option that's available here. Um, but uh, this uh, French Tarash will basically, um, you know, involve having a, um, you know, a good, well-supported, um, uh, you know, a good, well-supported, relatively conservative um, center for white. Uh, you know, it's not a big spatial disadvantage because this d4, e5 pawn holds up well. Um, but, uh, you know, this, uh, this center advantage, or, you know, the, or the developmental advantage for white uh, is less advanced than uh, it is in the normal French. Uh, it's not. It doesn't show up as a spatial problem, um, but overall, this is a more uh, conservative placement of pieces. Uh, these pieces aren't nearly as advanced, um, and uh, and overall, um, you know, white doesn't have the same uh, ability to press black. Um, but it leads to a solid small positional lead. Um, so if that's what you're going for out of the French, uh, this can be a less theory heavy way to do it. Um, you know, uh, you uh, on pawn takes e4, it transposes into um, uh, knight takes e4 mainline French anyways, so you have to be ready to play that as well. But um, but overall, knight to d2 is uh, is less restrictive for the c pawn, more restrictive for the dark squared bishop, um, and overall leads to a solid um, but more conservative position for for white than in the normal French. Uh, I think in terms of themes, that's that's the main point. Uh, c5, e takes d5, queen takes, knight gf3, c takes, bishop c4, and eventually this d4 pawn is going to fall and white will equalize materially and then basically white will have a queenside majority, um, basically having this c pawn in exchange for this black e pawn. Um, but, you know, overall it's, uh, it's less pressing for white against black, um, but a solid, uh, a solid idea in case you're interested in, uh, uh, taking a look at it. Um, I think we should probably take a look at a French Tarash game at some point. Uh, you know, Tarash is not here, so um, I, uh, I'm not getting pressed by him to, uh, uh, you know, go over a Tarash game. 
Um, but generally, I would say this opening is uh, is better for um, you know this this opening is better for white. Uh, possibly not as much as a perfectly played um, uh, mainline French, but overall, in terms of analysis, very solid. Um, and uh, and um, black generally or white generally has no issues. Uh, uh, you know, if he chooses a route in which he maintains the full center, uh, move like uh, you know move like c3 becomes much more available, and then c5 can be responded to by the c3 pawn. Uh, pawn takes d4. Pawn takes d4. Uh, everything, yeah, everything basically in that opening is is based around being solid and not bad, and um, uh, you know, but not pressing uh, uh, black as hard as uh, the mainline um, French tends to. Uh, anyways, uh, that's kind of a brief overview. Uh, the, those are a few of the lines, um, and uh, yeah, if you're interested, uh, we can go over it some more. If anyone's interested, uh, we can uh, we can take a look. Um, but I just wanted to get on to the next game here. Um, here, uh, this is. Um, uh, okay, um, top is playing black. Uh, let's take a look from black's perspective. Um, and here, uh, e4, d5, uh, it's a, um, uh, it's basically a Scandinavian game. Um, knight c3, queen a5, queen a5, Scandinavian. Bishop c4, knight f6, uh, d3, knight c6, and uh, and this is this this to this point is relatively normal development. Um, black has some issues with the c7 pawn. Uh, this is vulnerable. You know, white is threatening a discovered check here. Um, and we'll need to be careful, but I think basically black will be all right. Um, uh, in terms of uh, moves here, um, queen e5 I think is played sometimes, yeah, but it is sort of strange. Uh, you know, knight, queen e5 uh, can bring this knight forward with development. Um, I don't know if this is the most healthy development uh, line, but um, but after queen e5, uh, uh, g and e2, um, you know, white, black has, you know, developed his queen, but uh, white has developed all of his minor pieces and uh, and has the normal developmental advantage uh, that's common in the Scandinavian. Uh, okay, queen e5, queen e2, uh, bishop f5, and uh, and here I actually think, I don't think queen e2 is the best. I think knight ge2 is the best. I mean, you know, given that, um, you know, white's in a position where he should be developing straightforwardly. Um, and, uh, and here, basically, um, you know, uh, black has used this inefficiency uh, followed by another inefficiency, um, which is knight takes uh, knight takes c7 to um, uh, try to advance his position. Um, it basically, uh, black's showing a little better here after uh, after the queen trade, which moves the knight forward and doesn't really help white at all. Uh, followed by um, uh, allowing black to basically trade off his knight for um, white's good squared bishop. Uh, so here, you know, the position um, quickly goes from the standard, you know, white has a small advantage out of the um, uh, out of the Scandinavian to a um, uh, black advantage uh, after these pieces get neutralized. Um, you know, now, uh, especially now before this knight has developed, um, white and black's uh, development has equalized. Um, and that's really not something that should happen in the Scandinavian. Um, in the Scandinavian opening, basically, um, you know, one of the big... Um, uh, let me take a look. Uh, no, I think um, uh, uh, I uh, I don't have that sorted by your uh, by your um, uh, chess.com name. Um, let me take a look. Uh, it's a good question, so I'll, I'll get to it right now. Uh, let's let's see. Uh, if it was uh, yeah, it's the next one. It's the next one. Reckless. Uh, thank you very much for sending it in, and uh, and it's, and it's the next game after this one. Um, yeah, I, I need to catalog it a little better, so I have uh, I have the uh, chess.com names matched to the uh, the um, uh, Twitch names. Um, but your game is next, Reckless, so thank you very much for sending it. Uh, we'll get to it shortly. Um, uh, yeah, so um, so here basically, you know, what Black has equalized in terms of development in the Scandinavian. Um, this, uh, you know, these three minor pieces go up against these three minor pieces, and this uh, this overall is going to be, um, uh, you know, better for um, you know Black than White. Uh, you know, the main advantage of um, the Scandinavian is uh, you, you basically there's practical comp having to do with um, getting your queen out so early and it being kind of a frowned upon opening. Um, and then, uh, and then, you know, uh, having good chances with the queen um, at the basically with being responded to by a better um, development by white. Uh, if white, uh, you know, doesn't manage to um, uh, basically improve on black's development, if if black is able to develop as quickly, um, this, uh, you know, this, um, 
opening, you know, basically this opening is going to be better for Black if he can equalize uh, uh, in terms of development, because uh, that's his real biggest weak, uh, weakest point. Knight d5 is an error here. Knight takes c4, knight takes c7, knight takes d2, and here basically, you know, bishop to b4 will uh, will lead um, to a win in material. Uh, you know, what's going to end up happening here is uh, black's going to get a full, or he's going to get, uh, you know, two pieces, two full pieces for a rook, um, and that's a material gain. So here now, um, uh, black has uh, two bishops for a rook, and that's, uh, you know, that's an advantage going into the end game. Um, Continuing to go through this, uh, yeah, uh, Bishop G4 and, and Castle's Queenside does pressure White's D pawn. So that's yeah, that's, that's definitely a thematic concept in um, the Scandinavian. Uh, it's, it you know that depends on what line it is. I mean, if that's the that's the Scandinavian D4 line, um, but uh, but yeah, um, uh, Bishop G4 and Queenside Castling do pressure the D pawn. Um, you know, black can have some good attacks, uh, regaining central control and a lot of uh, force being put on that d pawn, um, especially if c3 isn't played or, or knight c3 is played before c3. Um, yeah, so that's another uh, that's another key advantage in a normal Scandinavian. Uh, we can take a look in a second. Um, it looks like black's able to convert this uh, this end game relatively well. Um, you know, it looks like this is you know reasonably good for black. Um, that pawn ends up getting lost, I'm sure, to that bishop, and black wins uh, Black wins this pawn endgame. Um, but yeah, let's go back to the opening, because I want to address your question, Mario. Uh, thank you very much for asking it. Um, so knight c3, queen a5. Uh, this is not a line in which uh, d4 is played, but the lines that you're talking about, Mario, are lines like queen d6, d4, c6, um, say knight f3, bishop g4, uh, I don't know, uh, bishop to c4, uh, e6, bishop e7, knight d7, uh, castles queenside, and then pressures exerted on this d4 pawn. Um, threats of bishop takes f3 and queen takes uh, d4 definitely happen. And uh, and basically, yeah, no, I agree. I, you know, I think that is one of the the main thematic concepts in uh, in the Scandinavian. Um, but uh, but this particular in this particular line, um, the queen a5 line. Uh, you know, partially because the queen is no longer on the D file, the queen sort of displaced um, those uh, those D4, and now also a white didn't play D4. Um, uh, those uh, those pressure on white's D pawn is not as pronounced as in in some Scandinavians. Um, but you're making a very good point, and uh, and that is um, that is another key advantage uh, for black in the Scandinavian. It's one of the reasons why black plays the Scandinavian. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, you know, the most the most important thing is is really that white plays D4 here. Uh, let's take a look at this opening theory. D4 is the most common move here, Mario. So you're you're absolutely right. Um, this uh, you know this D3 is the second most common move, but D4 is the most common move. In this line, there still may be pressure applied on the D pawn uh, with like knight c6, bishop f5, e6, and uh, either queenside castles or rook d8. Um, but uh, but overall, I would say that uh, this. Um, uh, you know, this pressure being placed on the d4 pawn tends to be a little bit easier and more common in situations in which the queen is on, like, d6, probably d6 and not d8, um, but but uh, the d6 line in particular uh, uh, involves the pressure on the d pawn. Bishop gets played to g4, uh, pressure in terms of bishop takes f3, queen takes d4, and then, uh, you know, basically, um, white will get will will get that pressure uh, and exploit this pin uh, from the bishop on g4 on the knight on f3, uh, usually by exchanging it if, if the pawn is really hanging. Um, anyways, very interesting. And, uh, yeah, let's take a look. Uh, knight c3, queen a5, uh, and uh, queen e5 is a, um, you know, an interesting move. Uh, you know, I know this is book. I know, you know, if you look at this, I know this is the second most common line here. Um, and it is true that the queen needs to move. I mean, the first most common line is uh, queen f5. Second most common line is queen e5. Um, but uh, I guess I would say here, basically, queen e5 is, looks a little bit awkward to me because, um, you know, it can be responded to by g knight e2 and forward white's development. Uh, I try not, you know, in the Scandinavian, um, white is already sort of advancing your de his development uh, and making your queen move with his advancing moves, gaining tempo. Um, I wouldn't, uh, you know, as a general principle, I would try not to give um, white the ability to uh, to improve um, on your uh, on your queen moves. So like queen e5, uh, uh, you know, 
Maybe knight, D, knight e2 is not the most natural square for development for that knight, but it still moves the knight forward in a situation where you didn't have to. Uh, hey, Matt Yop, welcome to the stream. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so here I guess queen f5 is uh, is the number one move. Queen e5 is the second most common move. Um, and on queen e5, queen e2 is a um, an error. Uh, you know, the the move here is knight to e2, advancing development. Uh, Black's given white an opportunity to advance uh, development basically uh, freely um, as a response to this check. So uh, you know, basically playing a non-developing move, queen to e2, is is um, not fundamentally correct here. Queen takes, knight takes, a6, castles queenside, e6, bishop f4, b5. And uh, yeah, I mean, basically, you know, I guess I would say black's going to probably play a game where he's going to be expanding on the queen side here. Um, you know, it's Scandinavian where, um, you know, white castles queen side is kind of interesting. Uh, you can have some aggressive attacks on the queen side and just keep advancing uh, over here. But, um, but yeah, uh, I guess I would say bishop to d6, uh, straightforward developing moves for white, and then advance the, uh, advance the attack. Like bishop d6, bishop d7, um, uh, maybe knight a5, uh, knight takes b3, and then a5. Uh, basically, that, that's kind of the structure of the attack that I would look at. Uh, so then a5 after that, after the bishop on d7 develops or uh, defends the b5 pawn. Um, but yeah, I just want to keep going through this game. Uh, in terms of improvements here, um, I think Black uh, did well. I mean, you know, uh, it's a little bit, um, uh, it's a little bit unusual to stop the analysis here. Um, but Black already has like a pretty good lead. I guess I'll maybe take another second to look through the the further part of it. But basically, Black has what is a winning lead. It's a two pawn advantage. He's up um, two pieces to a rook. He wins a full piece. Certainly from this place, after uh, black is up a piece completely, um, it's worth, uh, you know, I, I, th I don't think we need to go through this endgame any further. Um, but I think the most important parts of this game, uh, I guess the thing, in terms of um, fundamentals, I guess I would say, uh, you know, I would revisit queen e5. I understand it's probably fine, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's in the opening book. Um, but, you know, uh, it's not what I would play. I mean, you know, basically with B ta B N D two uh, or or uh, G N D two G N E two, um, this uh, this full knight, um, uh, you know, basically uh, gives White a, a solid initiative. Um, White now has his full development. Black is behind. He hasn't developed either of his bishops, um, and uh, this you know gives th this F uh, E five square is not that much better in my mind than the F five square and you've given white an extra move to develop. If you play queen f5 instead, I would bet that knight f3 is still one of the most commonly played moves here. Yeah, knight ge2 or knight f3 is played, um, you know, in 100% of the book lines out of queen f5. Um, so, you know, if you're playing queen e5, you're basically drawing knight e2, and that's sort of something that, uh, that um, black wanted to do anyways. Uh, queen d6, knight g3, e6. Now it's sort of like a queen d6 Scandinavian, which I'm more familiar with as a general structure. Um, but uh, but basically, white still uh, has a solid um, uh, initiative here, uh, an initiative-sized lead. Um, yeah, uh, so in terms of improvements, I feel like black played this pretty well. Scandinavian is pretty aggressive. Um, uh, queen e5 is a move that is in the opening book, but I don't um, particular that I, it wouldn't be my preference there. Um, I think here everything's basically fine, and then the, the balance shifts very quickly. Uh, knight plays to d5, knight takes c4, knight takes c7, king d7, and now you basically get those two um, uh, pieces for um, the pawn. Overall, it's a very accurate game by, uh, by Black. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Julia. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining the stream. Um, our, your game is fifth, so it's going to be probably in about 45 minutes. Uh, or maybe, uh, sorry, if we're finishing the second now, I would say your game will be in... 35 minutes. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much uh, for joining us, Julio, and thank you for uh, for um, helping to contribute with all of those games. Like, super helpful to get plenty of games sent in, uh, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't think this, I think this endgame isn't super worth analyzing. Um, I think maybe, uh, you know, white should stop trading here. Uh, basically, you know, white is down material um, and uh, and should probably try to keep the pieces on as opposed to trading the knight on d4 for the knight for the bishop on f5. Um, just as a general principle, like, 
you know, trading off in a position where you're already down uh, is uh, is not generally correct. Um, I understand wanting to disrupt the bishop pair. I'm sure that's why that was done. Um, but uh, overall here, black plays well. Not not a lot of opportunity for black to improve, really. Um, I think, you know, basically it's a very solid game. Queen a5 is a Scandinavian line that I don't know as well as I know queen d6. Um, queen e5 is also a move I wouldn't have played, but appears to be okay based on the, um, the opening theory. And, uh, and here, uh, I guess I would just say, um, you know, black is better. Uh, you know, black will have to basically play chess, you know, execute tactics. Um, but in terms of general strategy, I think both for white and for black, it's already sort of determined at this point. Um, black is going to basically use his extra piece to exert pressure on some vulnerable pawn, uh, probably, you know, one of the queen side. Uh, and white's going to try to keep pieces on and, and potentially, um, you know, win some type of material. Uh, white's going to probably need to get two pawns back in order to be in okay shape. Um, but this game's already practically over. Um, I guess the big error I would say here was uh, was playing knight to d5. Uh, this just wasn't as good an idea as, uh, you know, uh, holding everything on the board, maybe bishop to b3. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think after those two pieces went for the rook, um, that, uh, that offered, uh, black a winning advantage. Um, uh, especially they, they, uh, it based, the two minor pieces were the bishop pair, uh, which, you know, makes, makes it even, even stronger, um, uh, you know, basically an even stronger advantage there of the two pieces versus the rook. Um, but here, you know, I basically would say that, uh, that black is fine and, uh, it's, you know, a good game. Um. No, uh, nothing, nothing in particular. Uh, you know, just very solidly played by Black. An unusual opening, um, but Black has uh, has generally accepted this opening as a, uh, you know, ba basically Black has has this opening in mind as a um, uh, useful resource. And uh, this, you know, after after this position, uh, basically Black is leading. Um, not much to uh, not much to correct or to add there. Um, I wouldn't have played queen e5, but it is an opening line, so I guess, you know, I guess it's fine. Um, very solid, accurately played game uh, by both sides, and uh, not um, not a whole lot to add. Uh, very, you know, very strong Scandinavian game that was, uh, that was simplified um, by this point uh, in the game. You know, 20 moves of theory and then, you know, 20 more moves of, uh, of black basically exploiting an already decided game. Um, but yeah, overall, very interesting. Thank you very much for sending that, uh, uh, David. And um, I, uh, yeah, I really appreciate you sending it and, uh, and helping out with the stream. Thank you. Um, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, this is Big Shaq uh, playing white. All right. Um, cool. Uh, okay. Um, so this is, uh, this, um, is uh, uh, the game um, we were just looking at. So this is, uh, this is Reckless Rowan's uh, game. Um, so here, uh, Reckless Rowan is playing white, and uh, and here, pawn takes c4, f3, pawn takes e6, and uh, and I think everything's you know basically. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna play through it really uh, quickly to to make sure I, I sort of understand the themes of this game. Um, okay, uh, interesting. All right, so uh, white plays against um, the uh, Benko Gambit. Uh, so c4, uh, c5 here, d5, b5. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is an interesting gambit. Um, you know, uh, d4 players will have to face this periodically. Um, in this game, uh, you know, uh, I'll just play through the most common ban Benko lines. c takes b5, a6, b bx a6, g6, uh, knight c3, b takes, e4, bishop takes, king f1. Okay. This is basically the mainline Benko. Um, the characteristics of this opening, uh, black expands quickly on the queen side. Um, you know, this rook gets good mobility. Uh, and, um, you know, this king gets to f1, uh, which is sort of disruptive. But, you know, the bishop has played to a6, and moves have been played to, uh, to cause this disruption. So it basically turns out equal. I'm going to guess the eval in terms of being positive here is probably plus 7, plus 0.7. Um, these uh, these centralized pawns provide pretty much complete center control for white. Um, this uh, queen side is definitely controlled by black, but it's not super important. So overall, I would say you know white holds most of the relevant squares here, and uh, and things are pretty comfortable. 
Um, King f1 and uh, I guess point seven, but it's actually all the way up to point, uh, plus one. Um, white is just better here. Uh, you know, g3, king g2, knight f3, rook f1, or rook e1, castles by hand. Um, I don't even know if that's worth it. I, I don't know if this king is really that vulnerable there. Um, we can play through a few more lines to just see how uh, white ha can handles this uh, this kingside position, but castling by hand seems like a pretty intuitive choice. Yep, that, okay, so that's what he does. Um, and uh, then... Um, yeah, I think basically, uh, you know, a3 probably. Um, but overall, uh, I think, you know, white's chance is probably to, um, you know, uh, use potentially play e5, but, you know, I guess I would also lean towards uh, starting a kingside attack. Um, the king's not really that vulnerable. I think a kingside attack potentially with all the way with queen to h1 uh, could be possible. Um, or maybe rook to h1 first and then... Uh, uh, h4 starts getting played. Um, Black will probably try to direct uh, attention to this queen side where he's better, but uh, but I don't th really think he'll get um, a. Uh, I don't really think he'll get anything out of it. Um, anyways, uh, this is interesting. D4, knight f6, c4, c5, uh, and then d5 uh, is is you know basically the main line move here. Um, instead, uh, so so d5, b5, and then b3 is played instead of c takes b5. Um. Uh, cool. Well, it still didn't match our uh, our um uh agreement. Um, but uh, I'm happy that someone got bishop and knight. Um, I can go on. I can go on t about that a little further. I mean, you know, to be honest, I think bishop and knight is is useful about. It's very useful about once every ten thousand games or so. Um. Uh. But you know, uh, general positional understanding is probably better to understand uh, uh, overall. Um. Interesting question, Vertwitch. Uh. But um. But yeah. You know. Uh. And I and I think you know the the marginal benefit of learning it is very low, except at a very high level. It's just not the quickest return on time. I feel like it's just one of those things that chess teachers sort of show because it's something that you can prove that you taught. Um, and out of principle, I just think that those types of things are pretty useless. Um, I guess, you know, what I would say about those types of things is that they're great for when they're useful, but they're if they're useful one out of every 10,000 games, you know, it's just not, there's just not much value in that. Um, you know, in teaching, I think what people like to do is they like to show that they were able to teach something, because otherwise they didn't um, add any value. Uh, and I think that's the biggest kind of deprivation of value of all is if someone's just teaching you something because they're trying to prove that they're adding value. Uh, you know, um, it's it's just it's it's uh, it's very easy to show something. Uh, you know, to show that you taught it. So I, I guess I would say it's sort of a, a trick. Um, but uh, but anyways, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it is good to learn. I would highly recommend that you learn it. Um, but don't expect it to happen more than out of one out of every ten thousand games, and uh, uh, you know, and and make sure that you, um, uh, you know, and and basically, uh, you know, be happy with that win that you get out against a draw one out of every ten thousand games. Um, I don't think that's where your time is best spent. I don't really support um, teaching something that obscure when you can teach something that you know you teach something that's less tangible. Um, but is useful in every single game, uh, you know, like better positional strategy. Um, better positional strategy is relevant in every single game. You can't prove it the same way that you can prove a, um, you know, that you can prove that you've taught uh, bishop and knight versus king. Uh, you can really prove that you should you taught a bishop and knight versus king technical solution. Um, but I, I really think in terms of usefulness, in terms of time expended, uh, you know, I, I think you add much, much more value if you uh, focus on things like better positional understanding, which is always relevant, as opposed to bishop, uh, you know, bishop and knight versus king, which is relevant to make a win versus a draw one out of every 10,000 games. Um, anyways, that's my position on that particular one. I just, I think it's one of those really, you know, silly things that, that people do. Um, but, uh, you know, my goal here is, you know, I, I think there are excellent resources to learn Bishop and Knight versus King. Uh, there used to be one on um, U.S. Chess Live, and I'm sure that that's been adapted somewhere else. Um, but that's not really what I want to do here. Uh, I think you can both learn it from better resources than me, and, uh, and you can learn from, um, uh, you know, I think you can learn that many places that aren't here. So I don't particularly want to spend time on it. I, I want to direct my time towards things that I think will offer you the quickest rate of return. 
uh, just in terms of teaching. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I just, it's one of those things, it's like, sure, you can prove that you taught it, but like, what value did it actually have? It has a, a lot of value in showing that you were able to teach at least something, but it's not really that practically valuable. Um, the less tangible things, I think, will show much better rates of return on teaching. Uh, so that's that's why I, that's a, one of the particular ones. I'll get off my soapbox on that, and sorry to uh, uh, to go on about it. But um, but yeah, I think that one's uh, that one's kind of silly. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Matt Yop. Um, do you have a uh, uh, do you have a game link uh, that you can send, um, or have you sent one already? Um, whatever the original time that I said it was, if, if um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, please, uh, please send the link and we'll take a look, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Uh, C takes B5, A6, B takes A6, G6, Knight C3, B takes A6, um, King takes F1, and uh, and here, um, this is pretty much, uh, you know, this I guess I would say is better for White. Uh, white is better here by about a pawn. Um, this is uh, this has sort of uh, uh, neutralized this attack. Um, let's look at this game. Uh, this game has b3. b3 is a much less common line. Uh, the main line here is c takes b5, like I played through a few times. Um, knight f3 uh, is um, also uh, uh, you know also a relatively common line. Um, b3 is is pretty far down the list. Um, it makes intuitive sense. A c4, d5 structure, uh, you know, I think is solid for white. Um, but I think there are liabilities, especially these weaknesses along this uh, this dark diagonal. Um, so let's just play through this. This pawn structure is is pretty good for white. Um, the uh, c4 pawn is a little bit backwardated, but um, uh, I think you know that should be okay. That should be be able to be held by um, uh, by the bishop on f1. Um, other also uh, a disadvantage of doing this it this way and and of having this c4 pawn is that this bishop can't get to b5, um, so you are somewhat limiting the mobility of your bishop. Um, overall, I, I bet that this pawn structure is better, uh, but I think the more natural pawn structure, the one that involves um, uh, e4 and d5, is probably a better way for white to hold onto the center, and that's just the main line Benko Gambit line. Uh, b takes c4, b takes c4, d6, knight c3, g6, bishop e2, bishop g7, f3, knight bd7, e4. Cool. Now white has a huge center. Uh, this is uh, this is solid, and this will be hard for black to break through. Um, uh, I guess rook b8 is the best move, but I guess I'm I'm a little bit impressed by uh, by how good the evals are for black here. Uh, this is weird. This is a main line. Um, I guess the main line doesn't particularly like the f3 e4 structure. Okay. Um, interesting. Uh, so by the point, uh, you know, basically after f3, uh, you know, the engine is is pointing towards an advantage for black. Um, e6, pawn takes e6, f takes e6, d4, or sorry, e4. Um, this is uh, this is interesting. I mean, white has center control or a good amount of control over this center, um, but uh, uh, it's basically um, you know based on pawn structure that isn't really that great. Uh, a pawn, c pawn, and then e through h pawns. Uh, this is way more fractured than black's pawn structure, and black's pawn structure is also somewhat fractured. Um, cool. Yeah. No problem at all, Matt. Yup. No, we're we're super happy to look at it. Um, I'll make uh, that analysis for you. Matt Lop is gonna be um, uh, it's gonna be the May seventh at um, uh, May seventh at ten a.m. Eastern. Um, thank you very much for sending that game, and I'm super happy to uh, to get to take a look at it. Um, so yeah, uh, here. Um, I just don't think this is. Uh, I, I think that this plan is is worth revi re revising. Um, the main Benko Gambit plan offers White good opportunities, uh, good advancements um, in uh, you know in the center, uh, good center control for White versus an open uh, queen side um, for Black. Uh, but basically, it doesn't matter because White castles king side, and you know the um, the queen side uh, the queen side is weak. Uh, so C takes B five, um, and. Uh, uh, you know, you're into basically mainline Benko theory. Um, this uh, this big center for white, um, this open queen side for black, and uh, this ability to get the king over to uh, to the king side. Um, anyways, uh, 
this um so 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 this b3 move i I think this is just sort of conceptually not the correct way to play the benko gambit um i would just take i would accept the gambit uh you know give up the openness on the queen side and uh you know play knight c3 e4 uh and basically um you know be in good shape as white uh castle be prepared to castle kingside or to play king f1 uh, like happens in the main line um and uh and just basically um uh keep you know keep going forward with uh, with that idea um b3 and this pawn structure has some weaknesses um this this you know you would say like okay well b3 keeps the pawn structure in the center contiguous but it sort of doesn't after uh after pawn takes c4 um this isolated c pawn could become a liability and uh, the focus um, the black will have on the um, the queen side here will become a liability. E5, bishop d3, and uh, and basically white's um, you know white's basically moving forward in, in kind of a solid you know basically white's white's doing moving forward in a solid way but already in a position where he's uh, significantly worse. Um, in terms of errors here, uh, nothing really. Um, I don't know. I mean, basically, you know, the biggest error here, you know, I think, I think this are this this from a, a strategic perspective, um, setting up this C4 D5 structure is already not common and not particularly good in uh, in the Benko Gambit. Um, you know, the Benko Gambit's a very commonly played line, and we only have nine lines uh, that involve this pawn structure on move five. Um, so I would avoid that. Uh, I would go with d5 and then uh, pawn takes uh, pawn. So so b3 is a uh, b3 is something that I, I want to steer you away from. Um, I, I see that there are a few opening games in it, but I think overall as a concept, just not that strong. Um, that said, uh, you know we now have su kind of an atypical um, Benko Gambit position. Um, and here, I guess what I would say is. Um, you know, Black's going to try, you know, Black's got a pretty well-made plan here. Black is going to try advancing on the queen side, and White is going to try to castle king side and get developed. Um, bishop b2 is probably a misplacement. Uh, you know, rook to b8 deals with this very easily. Um, you know, resources are now being expended defending the bishop on b2. Um, but overall, um, I think... Uh, I think basically this, you know, this leads quickly uh, in Black's favor. Um, uh, white's pawn structure is way worse. Um, the black's worst pawn, the the one on a7, isn't really directly attackable. Whereas this c4 pawn definitely is. Um, you know, knight h knight a5 can be played, queen a5, and then knight a5 can be played, um, and uh, and pressure can be placed on this um, this c4 pawn. Uh, Anyways, um, knight takes, pawn takes, uh, f4, and uh, basically, um, you know, black is way better. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, basically, black, white loses his queen, and, and the position kind of deteriorates. Um, let's uh, let's slow down, because um, uh, the first the first correction, first takeaway, biggest biggest takeaway, and and I, I just I think I can be fairly blunt on this one. Um, don't play pawn take c4 uh, or b3 pawn take c4. That's just not a good structure for uh, for white. Um, I think uh, I think pawn takes b5 is the way to do this correctly. Um, uh, I understand the reasoning and I like the idea of keeping the pawn structure um, contiguous here. Uh, but you can keep uh, two contiguous pawn structures with um, uh, pawn takes b5 holding these two and then connecting uh, connecting all of these. Um, that leaves white with a better pawn structure at the end of the the whole gambit. Um, I understand like the need, the, the desire to, to take toward the center here, um, but this just isn't uh, how you play this opening. Um, uh, I think yeah, I think a lot of kind of fundamental problems will end up coming up uh, with this. I mean, you know, um, white, black played a gambit, and and white's already showing a pretty solid negative. Um, F three, I think, is probably a little bit inefficient. Something like knight c three uh, with e four in mind um, is probably better. Uh, developing and playing, um, developing and playing e4 early to uh, to secure white center is uh, is really a, a good idea here. Um, knight c3, e4, bishop to d2, and uh, and I think basically things are pretty solid uh, in the center. Um, f3, uh, f3 is just a little bit slow. Um, I, I guess I would say um, uh, you know set up e4 not with f3 but with knight c3, e4. Uh, that's a way better way to go.
Um, after this happens, black's already showing a, a you know a one pawn advantage. Um, here's a break for white. Uh, e5 is an inaccuracy, allowing you to strengthen uh, and possibly outpost a knight on d5. Um, here I would play knight c3 with uh, with knight d5, uh, you know, ready to be played pretty um, soon after. Uh, so yeah, knight c3, um, knight c6, rook b1, knight h5, queen d5. And overall, yeah, threats on d6. I mean, cool. Bishop d2. But straight uh, straightforward development, I think, should be helpful for white here. Um, you know, in terms of pawn center, uh, this is actually a really good pawn center for white. Um, this is why the eval changes. Uh, this d6 pawn is weak. Um, this basically d6 pawn is a backward pawn that black's probably not going to be able to fix for the rest of the game. So something along the lines of queen d3, rook d1, knight c3, knight b5, and threats on d6. Um, I think overall that's going to be um, uh, the best way that white plays this. Uh, that that pawn is just weak and backward, so I would want to make sure that you can uh, you can get good play against it. Um, that's uh, yeah, that's my recommendation there, um, uh, and why uh, the engine shifts as a um, uh, you know the engine shifts after e5 is played. Uh, this backward pawn is going to provide this backward pawn on an open file is going to provide a target um, for white for the rest of the game. And a way that white can play this to um, to basically continue, or, you know, basically it, it sort of sets up at least part of a plan for white. Um, it's pretty clear that this is uh, this is something that white can target, uh, so he should definitely do it. Um, you know, there are many times when this uh, this um, c5 d6 e5 pawn structure is um, fine for black, uh, but they tend to be, you know, they're they're exclusively in positions where um, uh, there's a pawn on d5. Uh, you know, that happens in the Benoni sometimes. Um, but, uh, but this is not, a, so it's an okay pawn structure. It's okay to have this backwards D pawn if the D pawn is inaccessible. Um, but if it's accessible to white on an open file, uh, that's going to be a big liability for, uh, for black, um, uh, in, uh, in this, uh, in this game. So anyways, um, that's what I would say. Uh, Uh, yeah, I think unfortunately this um, so 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 this was a this was basically White's best uh, best middle game opportunity was to uh, cement a plan on this uh, this d6 pawn. Um, uh, I would do it with knight c3, knight b5, um, and then uh, probably like I probably would end up casting kingside. So there's you know there's reason to play bishop d3 and knight e2 and then castle. Um, but I would try to do it with uh, with knight c3 having been played and, and rooks mostly rooks exerting the pressure on d6. Uh, yeah, um, so I think by this point uh, black is just way up positionally. Um, in terms of material, this is still technically equal, um, and then it really collapses after. Uh, 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 knight to b5 here. Um, this pawn is pinned, so it can't play pawn takes b d4. Um, but after bishop to f3, uh, this exchange gets hung first, uh, and then white gives up the full rook, and then um, basically uh, black wins. Uh, so um, qu things quickly go south. Uh, in terms of this, um, in terms of this situation, uh, e4. You know, by the time you play uh, e4, you've spent some valuable tempo. Uh, the correct idea here was knight c3 e4. Uh, definitely e4 is something that um, should be played for white here. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. I guess it's it should definitely be played for white in the normal Benko gambit. In this with c4, e4, I have a, more questions about. And maybe it's less useful if c4 is there. The c4 is usually not there, so I'm assessing the position. I might be skewing my, my assessment based on the idea that the c4 pawn isn't there right now. Um, so maybe e4 isn't even worth playing here uh, if the d5 pawn is already supported. Um, maybe here you just develop in a straightforward way. Either way, white should move towards a more um, uh, development-heavy uh, placement against the Benko. Uh, this, um, you know, this b3, I think, offers you a really tangible thing to change. Uh, this just isn't an opening line. Um, I guess it's not, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's just uh, anti-thematic and, and not, um, uh, you know, not the opening line here. Uh, B3, pawn takes C4 uh, is not a line that I know and not a line that particularly makes sense. Um, 
And then, uh, and then I would after this I would aim and uh, and start to advance knight c3, bishop d2, knight f3, e3, bishop d3, and uh, and basically you'll be okay. Um, you know, uh, straightforward development for white. Uh, you know, white's not losing. Um, white has sort of distorted the Benko, uh, but has created at least an interesting position um, that black's probably not super prepared for. Um, yeah, just get developed, um, you know, play a development heavy game and, uh, and you should be in smooth shape here. Um, thank you very much for setting the game. Uh, and, uh, yeah, good luck, uh, good luck against the Benko. Uh, it's a very interesting game, tough to, uh, tough to play against. Um, but that's, uh, you know, unless you know that theory extremely well, uh, that's not the, the opening lines that, uh, that I think you should be playing. Um, normal lines in the Benko just to, to go through it once again, uh, D4, B5, pawn takes B5, and then games played with knight c3, e4, and strength in the center. Um, yeah, no, no, thanks for fa thanks for sending the game. Um, I hope that it was helpful. Like, you know, I, I guess I would just, yeah, take a look at b3 uh, versus the mainline Benko. Uh, I think a lot, you know, was dangerous there, and I think I think you needed a more um, uh, development-heavy focus, um, you know, in, in the early middle game, or late opening, early middle game. Um, f3, e4... You know, first, I'm not sure how valuable e4 is uh, when c4 is available, um, but I would also, uh, you know, aim to play um, e4 against the uh, uh, knight c3 e4 there. Um, yeah, no, no, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Reckless. Appreciate it. Um, all right, uh, on to the next one. Um, this is Brian's game. Uh, Brian is... Uh, I think Brian is playing white here um and let's take a look uh okay it's against the caro con um mainline caro con uh just i always want to go over this because it's very important to know the mainline caro con or in my opinion um it's something that you'll see very frequently in both your games and master games uh bishop f5 knight g3 bishop h5 h4 h6 bishop uh h5 bishop h7 knight f3 um, and then uh, usually, um, yeah, so knight f3, and basically, you know, you're planning to, to take um, uh, on uh, uh, d uh, bishop to d3, bishop takes d3, queen takes d3. Uh, if you know you've played it correctly, if you play queen takes d3 on the 10th move. That's always how I learned it. Um, I hope that's a helpful way to learn it. Uh, but, um, but basically, uh, you have these pawn advances. Um, just to go through this again, I'll do it out of the opening book this time. Um, uh, d4, d5, knight c3, d takes c4, knight takes, bishop f5, knight g3, bishop g6, h4, h6, um, knight f3, knight d7, h5, bishop h7, bishop d3, bishop takes, queen takes. Um, that is the mainline Karakhan. That is a position that I think is of general interest regardless of how you, um, uh, you know, regardless of what you do. Uh, but um, but definitely, if you're an e4 player uh, and you'll face the carry con periodically, um, this is uh, something that I think uh, is valuable to know. Um, just a 10 move sequence, not a, not very memorization heavy, um, but memorizing it to that point, I think uh, I think is something that's valuable. This is an unusual way to play the carry con. Uh, knight f3 is way down the list. D4 is basically an 80, 80 to 90 percent choice here. C4 is also sometimes played. I, I've played that a couple times. Um, but uh, but knight f3 is uh, is pretty far down in terms of moves to be played against the Karo Khan. d5, knight c3 looks right. Bishop to g4, h3, bishop takes f3. Um, and yeah, this is an unusual Karo Khan. A lot of pressure getting um, uh, you know uh, exerted on d5 here. And overall, I think you know basically pretty good for white. Uh, d4 is a move. Knight e2, and then uh, interesting. So bishop c4 is actually a tactical play there. Um, but I think it'll transpose the same. Uh, knight e2 here, uh, redirecting to knight g3. Um, and I think white's probably good. Uh, this is, um, you know, this is pretty pretty good for white, I think. Uh, it's, you know, it's it's a little bit awkward to have the queen on f3, but, uh, you know, there have been enough trades here, and uh, and the knight is, you know, the, basically the, the f3 knight is gone, so it's not depriving that knight of its natural developing square. Knight e2, g3, I think, is the way to go. E4, and then, um, and then here, yeah, knight e2, sure. Uh, 
I guess main lines here, uh, D4 is not the most common line here. The most common line here is E6, D3. I'll just play through the most common sort of uh, line. Um, basically, white's going to start generating an attack uh, in sort of like, why not? If the queen is on F3, you might as well start attacking uh, black's king side. Um, and uh, it's basically, um, uh, you know, you, basic, you basically are attacking black's king side because you have pieces available to, to be used on that. This bishop's directed over there. This rook is uh, able to support these pawns, and these pawns are already halfway into their kind of attacking pawn storm positions. Um, so overall, I think uh, I think white is um, you know white is pretty good here. Uh, but that's not what's played. Instead, d4. Um, d4 is going to have some similarities where the knight plays knight e2, knight g3. It's almost like d4 uh, played in uh, you know um, the early one. Like if you, if you play one knight c3. Uh, d4 actually becomes pretty playable. Uh, d4 becomes playable, and then knight e2, um, knight g3 becomes the maneuver. Uh, knight f6, bishop e2. Okay, um, bishop e2 is a pretty conservative move. Um, I don't really think there's that much value on this diagonal. Uh, so I guess I would offer this as sort of an idea for, um, for white to potentially improve. Uh, bishop e2 holds this diagonal, but this diagonal was never really very important. Um, this uh, this knight could go to h5, but um, this uh, you know uh, this isn't really. The, I, I guess I wouldn't say this is this is a super valuable idea. Um, uh, do I know how to have, uh, enable pre-move on chess.com? Um, yeah, I think I've got pre-move. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think so. Uh, why do you ask, Matt? Yeah, I'm kind of curious. I mean, you could check if you want. Uh, have the we have the screen open. Um, yeah, so this is this is pretty aggressive. Uh, knight to f4 is a, is a pretty aggressive play. Bishop e2, I think you know, it, holding this diagonal is not that valuable. Uh, I would push uh, you know straight to the c4 diagonal, like the opening book says. Basically, this diagonal is much more powerful. Um, pressure on f7 is solid, and uh, and overall here, I think uh, I think White's in a good place. Um, Say b5, bishop b3, b and d7, castles, knight c5, d3, g6, rook d1, and uh, yeah, I think everything's good here. Uh, c3 probably, knight takes, pawn takes, and uh, you know, it is a sacrifice of your bishop pair to that knight, um, but uh, I think, I think you know, white gets this open uh, file for the rook. Um, that bishop wasn't really going anywhere. C2 was not a great space for it. It would have had to relocate from there pretty quickly. Um, but now, like, bishop to g5 and, uh, and solid um, pressure on uh, the f6 knight. Uh, white's better. Um, okay. Let's go back. Uh, d4, knight e2. And then, um, so, so the first, the first move that I'm going to uh, basically make, you know, you've had a, you've had, you've been playing against a very unusual opening. Um, so, uh, from a conceptual perspective, I think you have a lot of leeway in terms of what to do. Like, your opponent's played something unusual, I wouldn't know exactly how to play against this particular Karo Khan. Uh, so, you know, definitely, uh, you've made intuitive moves. This move, Bishop E2, I think is something to wor worth thinking about just as a takeaway from this game. Um, this diagonal just doesn't offer much for this bishop. Um, this diagonal offers a much more straightforward path to attacking. Um, you know, potentially this bishop could come in for some kingside attack, but it would be really awkward to do it in this way. Uh, basically, with the pawn anchored on e4, bishop c4 becomes the most natural, uh, you know, the most natural space for the bishop to develop, and uh, and this diagonal here gets uh, gets solidified for the bishop. Um, that's what I'd recommend. And uh, you know, overall here, I think uh, I think White's in a pretty good uh, good place. Uh, you know, e even with with even without securing this strongest diagonal. H6 is a very quiet move, uh, non-developing move. Um, you know, basically, I you know I would give the same advice to Black here. Like H6 does one thing; it prevents Bishop to G5. But White is moves away from playing Bishop to G5. So why are you playing H6? Um, yeah, thank you very much for the um, the follow spared. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so uh, so I guess I would just say um, h6 doesn't really help here. Uh, bishop uh, pawn on g5 or is not really that great, uh, or the bishop on g5 is not is not really that great. So a pawn move uh, whose sole purpose is defending it is not really that solid. Not what Black needs. Um, black needs a solid uh, a solid attack here. 
uh, or black needs solid development here. Both sides need solid development here. Uh, bishop c4 is the correct place to be developing the bishop, and uh, you know um, h6 is is not a move that advances development, and for for that reason, I think it's not a great idea. Um, knight f5 is also played. Knight f5 is easily dealt with. Uh, g6 and knight has to go right back to g3. Knight g3. Uh, that does weaken the king side a little bit, but not enough to make knight f5 worth it. Um, instead, what I would do is I would, uh, you know, potentially play, I guess, I mean, I would probably try to fix things and play bishop to c4 and then d3. But um, uh, I guess, you know, in terms of, uh, I think moving the knight twice uh, here is not the right concept. Um, I think you do want to play developing moves. d3 is another idea if you're very attached, you know, since you've committed the bishop to e2, uh, d3 does uh, improve the development of the, um, the dark squared bishop. I think development is very important for both sides here. Uh, so knight f5, uh, knight c5, um, and uh, knight e6, sure. Um, cool. Uh, overall here, I think white is a little bit better. Um, this attack doesn't look that solid. I don't know if you play bishop takes h6, but... Um, yeah, no worries, Tarash. No, I think uh, I think you're really on the right track with that. And uh, if you keep up the good work on that, Tarash, I'm sure you're going to be in a good place very soon. Um, Bishop takes C h6 actually looks like a playable tactic, doesn't it? Uh, I don't see anything wrong with Bishop... What happens on Bishop takes h6? Uh, yeah, I guess the queen just gets dislocated. Cool. No, keep up the good work, Tarash. I think uh, I think you really got a good plan there. I think that will help you improve pretty quickly if you're uh, if uh, if you stick to it. Um, probably regardless of your level, but certainly uh, at class level, you know, tactical training I think is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Until you're about until you're probably an expert. Um. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I think there's some errors for, for black here, uh, or, or some errors for white. Here I think white's in, you know, good position. Uh, I think rook c1 is a good idea. It basically controls the c-file. Uh, maybe rook c2, rook c1 if you have time. Um, sure. Uh, control over this c-file is good. Um, h4 is a little strange. Um, but I don't know if there's anything better. I actually think bishop d1. Uh, and I, um, yeah, because basically, you know, this queen is causing a big issue. Uh, with the queen controlling this file and able to get into white's position, uh, you know, this queen has a lot of value. I think rerouting the bishop to d1 and then to b3 uh, is probably the best option for white. Uh, this keeps that file closed. Uh, basically, the queen can't get in because all the white squares are covered. Um, and, uh, and letting the queen into the position is an error. Um, so in terms of the second, you know, the second improvement that I have for white here, uh, I think um, letting the queen into the position was probably the decisive point of this game. Um, let's just go through this. Uh, e4. Okay, so so first, black's played something unusual, uh, so I don't have much of a, an, any advice on that. Um, bishop e2, I think, is not the right developing square for this bishop. I think c4 was. Um, bishop e2, this, this diagonal just isn't that useful for the bishop. Um, bishop c4 is more valuable. I, I recognize the bishop's going to get pushed with like b5 and bishop b3 and a5, and, and it'll be annoying over there. Um, but bishop c4 is what I would play. Uh, h6 there. Okay. Um, and then, and then I think I would steer away from knight to f5 just because it's, um, you know, not a developing move. The knight's already developed on g3. Um, and it's pretty easily dealt with by g6. Um, then I think, you know, white's basically about equal. Uh, I don't think any, I think all of these moves were pretty reasonable. Um, and then just the final error, uh, the final, the final opportunity for improvement was just, uh, here, um, you know, I think h4 launching, pushing on this kingside attack is, is, you know, a fine idea. I don't have any problems with it as an idea. Um, but letting the queen into this, uh, to this kingside should be really avoided at all costs. So bishop d1 actually effectively does it, which is kind of impressive. I mean, these two bishops basically, you know, successfully work together to, uh, to stop the queen from coming in. Um, so bishop d1, bishop b3, and, uh, think, uh, I think everything's good. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, very, uh, in a very good place, uh, Tarash. Thank you. Um, yeah, very happy. Uh, so yeah, so bishop d1, bishop b3. 
Um, and uh, and I think um, uh, I think basically white's good. Uh, nothing too exciting there. Um, just uh, just covering all the entrance squares, and uh, and white's better. Uh, and then after that, uh, the position sort of deteriorates pretty quickly after the queen, um, you know, the queen gets in on the c-file. Uh, but those are the three moves that I would look at. Um, in terms of that bishop move, I would look for a, a more productive diagonal. Uh, e2, I think, was a little bit, um, uh, weak, you know, basically weak. Uh, I think c4 was better. Um, it just, it just doesn't, it isn't productive enough is, is the main point. Bishop c4 is a better play. Um... The second move uh, that I think I would revisit uh, is uh, is knight to f5 here. Um, g6 deals with knight to f5 immediately, and uh, there's not really much you know there's not really much developmental advancement there. Uh, I think I would just you know you're moving back to knight g3, and you could have taken that moment to play like d3 or something that would uh, that would advance the bishop. Um, and overall here, uh, I think you know you're pretty much good. Um, I think you know basically white has equalized. Um, and then with bishop to d1 here, white is still, you know, equal or slightly better. Um, just, uh, so, so there, you know, basically, uh, letting the queen control this file was inevitable, um, but, uh, but controlling, uh, these squares was really the, the improvement, uh, for, for white here against, uh, the black queen. Um, the black queen didn't have to be led into this position. Things are still potentially sort of tricky. I mean, this knight can move and queen can play to e6 and maybe to a2. Um, but I think with bishop d1 and bishop to b3 followed on the next move, um, it's going to be really hard for uh, for black to advance on this queen side. Um, this would have been a saving move. This would have given you a plus equals position. And uh, and yeah, I think you're good after that. Um, so definitely, uh, yeah, definitely look towards bishop d2, bishop d1, uh, and I think things are pretty solid. Um, interesting game. Uh, definitely a few different positional concepts at play. Um, I think, uh, you know, I think in general, I, uh, you know, if you have more time or, or you played this again, I think you would, you know, see that that bishop move, uh, you know, is not on the most productive diagonal. Um, and I think uh, you would see that the queen is, you know, if you can prevent the queen from getting in, you, sh you definitely should. Um, and I think that's, uh, you know, that's another takeaway from this game. Um, overall, very solid game. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for the game, for sending the game. Um, uh, uh, Brian and uh, yeah, please uh, please keep sending them. I'm very interested. Uh, this was really interesting and, and a good instructional game. Um, so uh, so yeah, please keep sending them. Super interesting stuff and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for your help with that. Um, hope that was a, a somewhat of a helpful analysis. Um, okay, cool. On to the next one. This one is um, from uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, sorry, this one is from Julio. Uh, let's take a look at Julio's game here. Um, okay, uh, just pulling this up. Um, cool. Yeah, sure, go ahead, Tarash. Uh, yeah, so e4, um, uh, so cool. So this is Julio's game. Julio's playing this one as uh, uh, white, I think, right? Uh, Julio is playing this as white. And um, cool. Uh, yeah, let's take a look. Um, so Julio's playing against the Sicilian. Um, early d4. Uh, early d4 is usually fine. Uh, Smithmore Gambit. Uh, has its own theory, uh, so that's you know that's cool. Um, uh, I don't know it super well, but if you uh, you know basically it's you know a very playable opening, pretty solid. Um, and Black makes early deviations here. Uh, so overall in this opening, uh, you know I would look at so Smith Mora, okay sure. Um, this is already sort of an unusual uh, opening for uh, for White, um, but but playable. So I wouldn't want to deter you from that. Um, uh, I guess, yeah, I mean, um, I assume you're, I assume the correct answer to that is Tarash, right? Uh, it's an interesting question. Um, so yeah, so c3, uh, d takes c3 is the most common, knight takes c3, and white's basically got sort of something close to equality, but, uh, but good, um, yeah, sure, please, uh, please send the game, uh, spared. Thank you very much for that. Um, 
I I think Tarash. You based your game you based your game off of him, right? Um, yeah, please uh, please send the game spared. Uh, here, I'm gonna post the link to the Discord. Uh, you guys can post on the Discord. That's probably the best way to do this. Um, but uh, but yeah, here let me uh, let me copy that and uh, and send you uh, the Discord link. Um, this is the Discord link uh, uh, for you. Um, uh, uh, spared. Um, please uh, yeah, please just post a game on there if you'd like. Um, but yeah, so uh, so here, um, C3 uh, is probably the best, and uh, uh, F4, Knight F3, and uh, and I think um, basically uh, you know good support of this uh, uh, you know basically good support on this this bishop file. Um, in terms of advancing, uh, I, I guess yeah, I don't know. This this is a sideline, right? So let's just go through the game. Um, uh, Bishop c4 is on. Yeah, no, no, this is your game, Julia. So I wanted to uh, wanted to make sure that we looked we looked at it. Um, here, uh, e5, knight d5, pawn takes d5, knight c6, bishop c4, and uh, yeah, uh, knight b6. Um, so this is an early bishop c4. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you know the the main move here is knight to f3, right? Um, but bishop c4 does challenge this knight uh, more quickly. Um, you know, then the bishop will have to play to b3, but you'll still have this long diagonal, so I guess it sort of makes sense. Um, in terms of eval, uh, pawn takes d4, knight c6, bishop c4. Okay, I, I mean, it is. It's a pressing move. I, I, I think this is interesting, at least. Um, the main move being knight to f3, but, um, but bishop c4 is, uh, you know, a response that's pretty solid, I think. Cool, yeah, thanks, Spared. Um, uh, I will add this, uh, spared your game is in for, um, May 7th at six, during the 6.05 PM stream. Um, thank you very much for sending it spared and please, uh, yeah, please keep sending them. Super helpful. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, no, it'll be on, uh, it'll be on Friday at, um, at seven, uh, at, during the 6.05 PM stream. Um, cool. Uh, Bishop B3 threatens this F7 pawn. And uh, and overall, uh, this is you know this is good pressure for White. Uh, awesome, cool, yeah, I got it, I got it spared. Uh, it's in for uh, for 6:05 p.m. Eastern on uh, on the seventh. Um, cool. So this bishop now has this long diagonal. Uh, straightforward developing moves like Knight f3, Bishop e, e3, Knight e, c3 should all be good for White. Um, uh, white has control of the center, but Black has the potential to undermine it. Um, overall, this has some characteristics that are similar to like the Alakine's gambit or Alakine's uh, opening. Um, kind of this loose, advanced uh, center pawn structure, um, but interesting. Uh, an interesting deviation in the um, the Smith Mora as well. D6, F4, G6, um, and uh, yeah, Bishop takes F7 looks like a practical sacrifice, right? Uh, cool, good tactic. Um, Bishop takes F7, King takes F7, Knight to G5, Queen takes G4. Makes sense to me. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I definitely understand that line of thinking, uh, Julio. Um, uh, if you know, if you know what you're doing, that can be definitely a, a helpful thing to do. Um, uh, bishop to h6, king e8. And here, I mean, I think you know, uh, white. You know, white is better. Yeah. So this is a good win for white. Um, in turn, so so I'm gonna. Um, basically make the assessment, right? Unless unless you want to learn opening lines, uh, I'm sort of going to make the assessment that you're interested in playing... Um, uh, hey, welcome, Electric Horse. Thank you very much for joining. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to um, I'm gonna make the assessment that you're interested in keeping um, your openings basically the same way that they are, right, uh, Julio? Um, like, uh, I guess I would say there um, that, you know, what you want to do is um, uh, keep... Uh, y you know, you want to basically um, keep your openings the way that they are. Because, like, no, I mean, you know, it's it's pretty straightforward. Like, um, uh, this, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure I would want to talk you out of playing unusual openings. Um, Smithmore Gambit, to start with, is, is a pretty small, you know, pretty rare opening, right? Uh, it looks like about, you know, there's 500,000 games, and it's about a 1%, played about 1% of the time. Um, that's fine. It doesn't mean necessarily that it's bad, but um, uh, it's a um, it's a, a step off of modern. You know, it's a step off of general theory. 
Um, bishop c4 here is also a less than 1% uh, played move. Uh, knight f3 is, is um, the main line here. Uh, knight f3, you know, you end up being able to play the bishop to c4 anyways, but I, I wouldn't dismiss bishop to c4 either. Um, I, I wouldn't want to talk you out of this stuff, um, especially if you know it, uh, these kinds of, um, you know, uh, less commonly played openings can definitely be helpful. Um, so I, I'm not going to want to talk you out of it. I just would say um, uh, if there's a, um, uh, you know, if, if there's basically a, um, uh, if there's a big deviation from op general opening theory, uh, that can be fine. Um, but, uh, but I, I, it's definitely something that I think you should be aware of. Uh, but there's no reason to not play, you know, doing something, uh, that's, um, you know, not commonly done just because it's not commonly done is not a, is not a great reason either. Uh, I think, I think you can do well playing less commonly played openings if you're very comfortable with them. Um, and they, and they're, you know, not, and they're, and they fundamentally make sense. Um, uh, here knight f3 is proposed. Uh, you know, I guess I would just say your, your opening, uh, or basically your, um, uh, Center is getting a little bit loose here. Uh, already, d4 and e5 are, are kind of a problem, um, but with uh, not not a problem, but they're they're kind of uh, you know um, attack. They 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 are somewhat vulnerable and will require resources to um, to remain defended. Uh, here with f4, um, I think you know you can play knight f3. You, basically, the engine is saying knight f3 instead of f4. F4 is probably fine. Uh, you know, I think you may have to play uh, D takes uh, E5 here. So say D takes E5, D takes E5, um, and this allows the queens to be traded off. But I don't think this is particularly terrible. Um, it just isn't something that you might want to do. So the important thing about uh, the important thing about F4 is that this, uh, you know, F4 as opposed to Knight F3 here. With F4, you either lose a pawn on D4. Or open yourself up to trading queens. Um, uh, tr trading queens is not terrible, um, but uh, but I think that generally this is uh, you know this is basically fine for um, you know this is basically fine for white. Uh, but um, but I you know it's a disadvantage of playing f4 over knight f3. Knight f3 is a, the main line and the straightforward developing move. Um, yeah, there's definitely some truth to that, Tarash, uh, for sure. Um, uh, bishop takes d1 instead of king takes d1. Interesting question. Uh, yeah, uh, we can take a look at that. Um, f4, uh, and then pawn takes e4, pawn takes e4, queen takes, bishop takes d1. Uh, yeah, I like it. I mean, it defends c2, c2, and knight d4 was a pretty likely move for black here anyways, uh, winning the, the, um, white's better squared bishop. I guess, yeah, I, I guess I would say electric horse. Good point. I, I would prefer bishop takes d1 as opposed to king takes d1. Um, this diagonal is not really doing anything right now for the bishop, so, um, so yeah. Uh, bishop takes d1 instead of, uh, instead of, um, king takes d1. I don't think white has to continue attacking there. I think, you know, you can just sort of leave it, but you can play like knight f3, knight c3, uh, and, and get your development back together. Uh, you know, White's game, you know, now it's sort of a, headed in a much more drawish direction. Um, my, uh, my advice here would be in this, like, super open, you know, relatively symmetrical game, um, just uh, focus on quick development and then try to set up uh, kind of a, a good attack. Maybe bishop e3 is good. If you could double these b-pawns, that would be good. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, this is an interesting position. Um, so, so I think knight f3 is an improvement over f4. Uh, you know, rather than, um, uh, you know, instead of f4 allowing that, I think you should play knight f3, uh, you know, holding these pawns, pawn takes, and then you could go through the same thing, but you could also play uh, d5 here. Um, then the knight goes to a5 or something, uh, knight c3, um, and then there's going to be a lot of pressure on this e5 pawn. Uh, so yeah, so knight f3 over, d, uh, over f4, I would say. Um, uh, and then bishop takes, great tactic, cool. Uh, I think in terms of the rest of the game, I think you're in pretty good shape for the rest of it. Uh, queen takes might have been an improvement over uh, over bishop takes f or over uh, rook takes. Um, sure, yeah, no, no, because I, I think the game pretty much ends after this, right? Like, you, oh, I guess not. Uh, 
Yeah, okay, so we get back into sort of a competitive position, but it's it's a super tactical game um, from here. Uh, yeah, let's look at e6. Uh, so e6 is played, and then um, uh, knight to b5 uh, is, uh, um, I, you know, I looked to the engine to get to do that that quickly, but uh, knight to b5 uh, is um, uh, a better way to exert pressure on d6. Uh, and here, yeah, like d takes e5, f takes e5 maybe. Um, but this uh, this d6 looks like a pretty good outpost for that knight. Um, if, uh, if white can make that happen, he definitely should. Uh, knight, oh, white playing e6 at some point. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, uh, I don't really think you have much of an opportunity to, uh, unless you're talking about right here. Uh, so, so on this move, you could potentially play e6, but basically as soon as this bishop moves there to g4, uh, you can already play, I mean, here you can already play bishop takes, uh, bishop takes f7 and have the same attack as a move later. Uh, you know, basically bishop takes f7 was available as a tactic a move before even, um, before even, uh, you know, this d6 pawn opened up the center. You can play it here, king takes, knight takes, and, uh, and everything's good. Yeah, good place for white. Um, uh, sure, yeah, let's look at that. Um, here, uh, I don't know, bishop takes, bishop takes, pawn takes. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think this this isn't quite. It's a good idea. I like the idea. I definitely think we can. You know, I think there are many positions where you can play moves like e6. I just think it was never. It was there. Uh, uh, like I don't think I don't think if you play it now, it's very good. You play bishop takes e, e6. Uh, yeah, no, no uh, e6. Bishop takes e6. Pawn takes e6. Maybe maybe knight to g5, but. Um, this is the only move where e6 is not, uh, you know, uh, uh, bishop takes f7, which you played and which was good, um, uh, was better than e6 uh, from the point that this bishop moves to a g4. So here even bishop takes f7, king takes f7, uh, and then um, uh, knight g5, queen takes g4, and, and you're in a pretty good place as white. Um, so yeah, overall, good tactic, good take on f7. Uh, rook takes, yeah, I think, I think you're just, you know, you're in a pretty solid place here. Uh, here I think basically, um, uh, black, um, you know, black's gonna take e5. I, I was, thought there was a moment here where white is actually a little better. Uh, what's the line here? Queen takes d4, knight takes, rook f1. I think it just. Uh, I think queen takes d4 is just bad because because uh, it allows uh, uh, queen takes d4, knight takes d4, and then rook f1, and then uh, and then this bishop's not going to go anywhere, or you know this bishop's not going to get attacked in any way. Um, what was really problem? What was really a problem in this position was uh, uh, when the knight forked on e5, uh, forking the bishop and rook. That was a problem. Um, queen takes d4 here. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. So I think if you just trade off the queens, you're better here, right? I mean, your pawn, your position is equal, but you have like some crazy attacks with the bishop. You're probably going to win a pawn, at least the g6 pawn. Um, so I think you can trade off here and be, be, you know, be good with it. Um, queen takes, knight takes, rook f1, uh, and things are, you know, going pretty well for white. Uh, not really that much. Um, yeah, no, I think I think white's white's in a pretty good place. There's just, uh, you know, not not too much danger. Um, so overall, after knight takes e5, um, you know, black's up, uh, and black, uh, I guess black blunders, uh, with, uh, allowing, b and yeah, good tactics, bishop g7. Um, can't black play to, uh, uh, defend after rook f1? Um... Uh, yeah, I mean yes. The answer is yes to that uh, electric. Um, uh, so knight here, knight here, rook f1, bishop. Uh, well, bishop. Uh, the the pawn's there on e5, right? Or 
Or do you mean here? I, I don't think uh, I don't think bishop f6 is ever fully playable, right? I think there's always uh you know the bishop will, the bishop on f7 will just move away if uh, if bishop to f6 gets played. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's still, you know, that's still just a trade, and the material's equal. Hey, welcome, hum Humunculus. Uh, thank you for joining the stream. Um, but yeah, White ends up winning this game. Uh, so in terms of places to look at for improvement, uh, I think, you know, basically you recognize you're playing somewhat unusual, um, uh, you know, some unusual, um end game here right uh bishop takes f7 king takes you know uh king f8 good tactic uh for sure julio um i think that was a good idea uh here i think um you know basically this queen takes is okay um but yeah this is a this is a very tactical position julio uh so the main focus i, I say to everybody on the stream um you know the quickest way that you can prove if you're not yet an expert uh, what you can do uh, is, um, uh, I would say, one hour of tactics a day for a month uh, using a tactics trainer of your choice. Uh, like, Chess Tempo's got a good free one. Uh, you know, Lee Chess, I think people really like, uh, like Puzzle Storm. Um, and Chess.com, Puzzle Rush, Puzzle Battle are the four that, uh, that I usually recommend. Um, but I think, yeah, I think those are, uh, those are a really good uh, choice. If you do those for an hour a day for a month, uh, you'll really improve. And, and basically, you know, you'll be able to kind of iron out a lot of the volatility in the position. Here, like, I'll show you something from um, the analysis, uh, Julio. Uh, you played a great game. Bishop takes f7 was a great tactic that you saw. Um, and, uh, you know, it basically won you this game. Bishop h6 also was a great tactic. Uh, but, you know, here, uh, queen takes d4. Um, you know, basically, the uh, tactical site, I think, will help you see things like, you know, after queen takes d1, knight taking e5 is going to fork this uh, bishop and rook. And instead, if you trade, uh, knight takes, knight takes, rook e1. Um, yeah, puzzle battle, puzzle rush uh, from chess.com. Uh, Lee Chess has one, I think, called Puzzle Storm, uh, or uh, Chess Tempo has a free, um, a free puzzle trainer. Uh, yeah, those are the ones I always go with, uh, humo uh, Humunculus. They're, they're all good. Um, you know, maybe there's slight differences, but, you know, really it's much more important that you put the time in than you, um, uh, you know, than you, than the differences between them. I, I just, uh, just an hour a day for a month on those, and I guarantee you'll see, like, a really, I, I you know, it's a tangible difference. I it would very much, I'm not, I, you know, I, I wouldn't bet my life, but I, um, uh, yeah, Tarash's plan is excellent. I really think that's a good idea. Um, but yeah, so white is better here uh, with the with trading the queens, um, and slightly worse after knight takes e5. Um, so yeah, uh, overall great tactics, um, and with a little bit more, uh, I think you really you know would have won this game. Um, this kind of volatility on this uh, this game analysis. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll just give you that right now, uh, Matt Yup. It's uh, it's right here. Um, uh, awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, basically, um, uh, this is, um, yeah, it was a good game, Julio, for sure. Uh, but I think, you know, with good tactical training, you can iron out the volatilities here. Uh, you can not allow these two black bumps to happen, and you can hold on to this big white, uh, you know, uh, like this, this, this edge for you here. Uh, basically, you want to make it so it's flat, is the point. So like from here to here, this is the type of play that you're interested in, or you're interested in it only heading your direction from this kind of flat line. Um, with great tactical training, I think, um, yeah, I think basically you can iron this stuff out. Um, but yeah, overall, I think I think you've played uh, you've played great. Uh, you had two big tactical sites, uh, you know, that regained this position. So like, look, I mean, you basically had like an eight move flip in your direction, eight point flip in your direction, um, and it's good. I mean, you know, if you want to do an overhaul of your openings, uh, you could try that. Uh, you know, we do like a lot of uh, uh, tactical, uh, you know, basically opening theory and stuff. Uh, it might be helpful if, if you're, you know, if you need to, if you're interested in learning the main lines. Um, but, uh, but overall, I think you're, in, you're, you're in, a pretty good, in a similar situation. Um, I, think, I think you would be able to, um, to win, in, you know, uh, with enough tactical training. 
Um, but unfortunately, I can't teach that. I basically, I think I can give you advice on strategy and, and openings and stuff. But um, I think at the end of the day, this tactics training, uh, you know, I would recommend the tactics trainers that were just posted in the chat. Um, but I think that's the fastest way that you can improve. And I think if you use those, uh, you'll be in a good place. Um, so that's what I would say on this topic. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What do you? What would you like, Tarash? Um, thank you very much for sending that game, uh, uh, Vertwitch. Uh, Vertwitch is in for uh, for uh, May seventh at six oh five p.m. Eastern. Uh, and uh, if anyone else sends, it'll probably be that uh, that session. Um, okay, cool. And then I'll add a I'll add an English prep also for um, uh, for Tarash on uh, uh, Thursday um, at six oh five p.m. Eastern. Or sorry, not Thursday, Friday, Friday, the seventh, the seventh. Um, uh, cool. Um, yeah, sure. I'll take a look at the English opening, uh, Tarash. Uh, sounds good. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so um, I want to get to a few more games here. Uh, we have Mr. Onion and Bolt. Um, I think we're gonna have to go through these pretty quick, uh, but I think we'll be okay. Um, I'm gonna take a look at Bolt's game. Um, I think Mr. Onion, uh, if Mr. Onion is here, uh, we will take a look, um, uh, but I want to go through these relatively quickly. Um, yeah, no problem, Julio. No, please come back. Uh, Julio, um, your next, uh, your next game, uh, Julio, is tomorrow morning, uh, during the 10 a.m. stream. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll take a look at the game today and, and try to come up with some analysis, but, um... But yeah, thank you for being here, here Julio. And uh, the next, um, uh, the next one is uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, so thanks for being here. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, Chess Bolts game. Um, this is a uh, very early, um, uh, some early uh, gambit for for Black. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is pretty interesting. Um, Vienna game with f6. Uh, this is not that common. So Vienna game with f6. F4, and basically here, uh, you know, white is, uh, you know, capitalizing on uh, some awkward positioning by black. Uh, the E pawn and uh, F pawn have been traded for the F pawn and the D pawn, and uh, I think white's got a better position after these uh, these this bishop pair gets traded off. Um, this is just sort of unusual. Uh, can you take on F4 immediately and play H5? Um, uh, so like for white, so if, uh, okay, so knight f3, pawn takes e5, e5, queen h5 here. Uh, yeah, you can, but I don't think it's that great. Uh, it just sort of moves this g6 pawn forward. Um, the queen's not that great on f3 here either because of knight d4. Uh, the queen's just going to get forced back to d1. Um, but it's a good question. And, uh, you know, basically white's got a kind of not that great position. Um... Uh, so yeah, so queen f3, knight d4, um, and uh, d4, and bas but basically black went through this big effort to try to make it so that um, that he would take with the bishop here and not the knight. Uh, I don't think there's much reason to do that. Um, I think white's just sort of better here. Uh, queen e4 maybe, um, bishop g5 is good. But uh, but overall here I think uh, yeah things are things are basically fine for white white's got better center control and then white uh, you know black hangs a piece a uh, lot of tactics here I don't know if there's that much value in me going through all of it um I think uh, you know I think basically that th the thing is I just don't I don't think I can help much teaching tactics like you know um, uh, maybe I could do a day where I like went through all the different types of tactics once or twice but like. You know, the tactics trainer is how you how you learn tactics. A, a teacher can't really teach you that. So these highly tactical games, you know, once the position is decided, um, are uh, I, I don't think I have much value add there. So um, so yeah, so bishop takes h f6 is probably not right. Um, I think here uh, I would play like bishop to h4 and uh, maintain this pin. Uh, overall, this pin is good. Um, and if black has to play g5 to disrupt this pin uh, with this bishop, 
um, his king side's going to be mangled and vulnerable for the rest of the game. Also, you'll come off of that g5, bishop g3 move with this attack on e5. So overall, good for white. Um, uh, yeah, let's take a look at electric courses opening for just a second. Uh, e4, e5, sorry, e4, e5, knight f3, f6, knight takes. Yeah, yeah, that would be an example, electric, uh, for sure. Um, and there's some sort of, you know, there's some threats in the Latvian gambit that are kind of like that. Um, overall, though, f6, I think, is just not playable for, uh, for black. Um, I think white gets a good position. Uh, trading off this knight for that bishop makes sense to me. Um, and then I would maintain this, uh, I would maintain this pin. Uh, you've played this bishop to g5 to get this pin. I think it's a strong pin. And uh, you might as well keep it. Because uh, the cost of, um, uh, you know, because the cost of g5 is uh, is too big for, for white here. Uh, you know, just play bishop g3, have the threat on e5, and uh, and pretty good. Um, uh, is that, I didn't know that's what it was called, but um, but uh, I think uh, that, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's just unfortunately not playable. Um, I understand the, the, why you would want to play f6 against, like, especially, it, it makes some sense to me against knight f3, but against knight c3 especially, um, I think f6 is just not the right concept. Um, knight takes, bishop g5, um, and, uh, and here I think white's just good. Um, not, uh, you know, basically, bishop b5 is probably, you know, kind of an unusual diagonal to put this on. Maybe I would play queen h5, hoping for knight f7, and play bishop g5. Bishop c4 after that, um, yeah. So so it's yeah no that's right. I would say that's true. Electric. Uh, it's it's dubious but not completely uh, completely losing. Um, so yeah. So queen h5 I think is an idea. Um, bishop. I don't know the right diagonal for the bishop. Bishop b5 isn't terrible. Um, but I wish you could play bishop to c4. Um, bishop to b6 and uh, rook to g8, bishop takes g8, and uh, and white has white smooth sailing. Um, not many improvements for white, really. Uh, you know, the game sort of goes in white's direction quickly. Um, in terms of moves that I think white could have potentially improved, uh, I wouldn't have played bishop takes f6 here. You have the bishop pair, you got it pretty much for free, so I'd hold on to it. Um, I would play bishop to h5 and, uh, and make black chase you away on this one. Um, you know, this is a good pin for you. Uh, so it's worth something. So with g5, I would not play, uh, I, you know, I basically would play bishop to g3. Um, I would not uh, immediately play bishop takes f6 uh, for against h6. Um, I just think it makes black's position better, and, and this pin is a problem for black. So I, I you know, I, in general, you don't want to solve your opponent's problems. You want to have them continue. Uh, so, uh, so bishop takes d8 uh, threat is big. Um, pin on knight f6 is big, and uh, you know the only response really being um, g5 uh, is conceptually pretty important. Um, maybe knight g6 could be played. I'm not sure, but uh, but definitely make black chase you away. Uh, don't uh, don't trade into this uh, this um, uh, tr don't trade your good bishop for this average knight. Um, bishop b5. I don't know if that was the right diagonal, um, but it was basically fine. Uh, and then bishop takes g8, and, and you're one as white. Um, so very good game, good good uh, good tactics, good job uh, seeing you know what was available to you. Um, and in terms of improving the position, um, uh, I'm not sure this was the best diagonal for the bishop. Uh, the c4 diagonal has to be in this position, the best light square diagonal. Maybe you could force the bishop to c4 with queen to h5. Maybe. Um, but uh, but overall, uh, uh, bishop b5 worked fine and ended up winning that you that rook on g8 so um pretty good uh thank you very much uh for the um yeah for sending the game uh bolt uh please keep sending them uh, i think definitely a lot of things um you know a lot of things to look at and uh definitely interesting uh to see the damiano um opening here uh please uh, please keep sending your games and uh i i also highly recommend uh tactics training i, I think it could be super helpful um, this game was decided by tactics, and I think a lot of games that you'll see are going to be decided by tactics. Um, so doing a tactics trainer for an hour a day for a month, I think, is a good plan. I think that'll help. And uh, yeah, please uh, please keep at it, uh, uh, Bolt. Uh, please keep sending me games, and, and thank you very much for participating in the stream. All right, we have one last game. 
It's um, uh, Mr. Onions, and I want to go through this one uh, a little bit quickly, unfortunately, but um, uh, we will definitely get to it. Um, this is uh, Monsieur Onion uh, playing white against um, uh, Jan Carlson, uh, and we will look at this. Um, but we're going to have to look at this one, unfortunately, quickly. Um, I, have another, uh, I have another thing that I, I um, am hoping to start at 12. Uh, anyways... Um, this is uh, Mr. Onion's game. Uh, Mr. Onion is playing um, uh, white, I think. Yep, Mr. Onion is playing white. And, uh, and he plays the Sicilian Alapin. Okay, we've looked at the Sicilian Alapin. Uh, the Sicilian Alapin is intuitive because it allows white to play this um, center controlling move D4 uh, supported by C3. Uh, and, uh, and here, you know, basically white has a good position. Um, this c4 move is interesting. It sort of locks in the um, the white bishop. Uh, the bishop can still develop to e2, and and maybe through f3 could could start pushing on d5. Um, but for now, uh, this um, you know closes that position. Uh, white could try to immediately undermine with uh, with b3, um, but uh, overall uh, threats on um, c4. Anyways, uh, let's keep looking at this. Um, I'm sort of curious to see where the divergence is. Uh, d5, e takes, e takes, bishop e3, c4, um, and uh, and basically white's you know white's a little better here I'm sure. Uh, whether to you know white has to decide whether to undermine the c4 pawn immediately with b3, um, but uh, but overall this is going to be a hard pawn structure for white to maintain. Um, here castles cool. Um, And uh, yeah, uh, you know, basically we're in kind of an interesting position. Um, knight f1 is interesting. Um, definitely white's mobility, uh, the mobility of white's knight on d2 is limited. So knight f1 probably does make, a lot, you know, a good amount of sense here. Um, I'm sort of wondering if white had to let this get so locked up. Um, I guess b3, the issue with b3 is they could always be responded to by b5. Um, but... I don't know. Uh, I guess I'm a little surprised that this is already so favorable to black. Um, I guess g3 is probably not the move to, to develop this bishop. Um, I think I think here basically an improvement would be playing b3. Uh, this puts pressure on this queenside structure immediately. Um, I understand g3 because uh, getting your bishop on this fianchetto is probably a good idea. Uh, you know, this um, this d5 pawn is attackable, but the rest of the position isn't. Um, so uh, so g3, bishop g2, bishop g2, and, uh, you know, white is in a pretty good place. Um, uh, but I think I think b3 is better. Uh, but g3 still makes intuitive sense, even if the eval shifts a lot. Uh, bishop g2, cool. This is the diagonal for the bishop now. Um... Yeah, overall, yeah. I mean, I guess I would say we're equal. A uh, lot of a uh, lot of um, game left to be played. Maybe b3 now, but I don't know. If you if now if you're sort of now you probably and now basically with b3 uh, no longer playable. So after a3, I think b3 is no longer the thing to do. Uh, this pawn is now backwards, but it's inaccessible, so it's probably okay. Um, uh, you know, you could potentially play b3. Um, but uh, now, basically, white st pawn structure is going to look pretty fractured. I think white's best chance here is to start an attack on the king side, um, uh, and just and just hold everything um, solid over here. Uh, I think this is what white does. Um, yeah, just leave this. Le leave leave this uh, leave this alone. Improve the um, the queen's position to like f1. And uh, and then make um, you know basically make sure that uh, that you've got attacks on the king side. Uh, knight to e5, I like. Cool, good discovery, and uh, and white wins a piece and wins. Okay, cool. Uh, overall, very good. Um, uh, super closed end game. Uh, I hope white wins. Yeah, okay. So white wins eventually, but. Um, really, a, sort of an interesting endgame. Um, the knight get, got trapped on a, on a5. Um, knight, yeah, knight got trapped on a5, and 
things got pretty yeah things got pretty tricky for white but overall a win for white um in terms of revisiting pieces of this game um sicilian alpin is good uh c4 is a very restricting move um the engine didn't like g3 i think it's fine i think g3 bishop g2 is a fine plan uh, i don't see any problem with it uh obviously this bishop's not going to do anything on this diagonal so um uh bishop g2 makes sense um I think thematically, maybe uh, playing b3 would have been helpful here, uh, but the bishop was still not going to be on this diagonal. I mean, in order to get this bishop on this uh, this f1 a6 diagonal, you'd have to play like b3 and then trade on c4 and then uh, play like bishop takes c4 or something. It's just not going to happen. So like here, c b3, b5, um, and uh, this, there's a lot of pressure on the c4 pawn. Um, so yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, now you're back to about even. Castles, knight d2, knight e6, or bishop b6. And uh, I, I guess I sort of am not a fan of a3. Um, you know, a3 makes this b pawn backwards. Uh, it would be good if you could get like b3 in, and then pawn takes b3, and then pawn takes b3. Uh, that would make the weak pawn in this chain the c3 pawn, which, you know, I think you might have uh, better. I mean, basically, it's, it's definitely more vulnerable to attack. Um, but your pawn structure is more centralized and not as generally backward as uh, as the pawn on b2. Um, so I think uh, a3 sort of limits your b pawn's mobility uh, and will make your pawn structure fractured if you trade off the b pawn. So for that reason, I, I guess I would say I, I would lean even here b over to b3 over a3. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, I mean sort of. There's some there's some truth to that. I, I would start advancing on the king side. I mean, you might be able to leave this all alone entirely uh, and start playing moves like h4, knight h2, knight g4, something like that. Um, but I think then you're good. Uh, knight e5 is what I would play here. Uh, yeah, so knight, knight e5. Uh, but white's got a good position now. Um, this really was the right plan for white, uh, you know, starting an attack on the king side. Uh, you know, I think you can just sort of leave the queen side alone. Like, don't even bother with a3. Just start playing, like, h... Maybe maybe the best way to do it is h3, knight f1, knight h2, G, knight g4. Something like this. Um, uh, so, yeah, so I would avoid a, a3. Um, hey, thank you very much, uh, uh, com... Uh, Thanks, thanks very much for the follow, Com. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you for joining the stream. Um, yeah, so a3, um, and uh, I think basically, um, you know, white's good here. Uh, it's about equal, no real problems. And uh, yeah, knight e5, I think, is the play. Uh, not bishop h3, just either, I, the engine saying knight takes f6 is good. I'd play knight e5. Uh, let's just see what the eval on that is. Bad. Great. Um, eh, it still looks like a good outpost to me. Um, uh, F5 is what the engine is suggesting. Um, but this, this uh, obviously, this kingside attack has been uh, has been very solid for white. So good play there. Uh, good, good idea. Good shifting to that plan. I might not have even spent as much time as you did on the queen side here. Uh, shifting to the kingside attack seems like the best strategic possibility. Um, Here, uh, yeah, knight g4. I, I like knight e5, but I guess there's a tactical reason to not do that. Um, knight takes f6, queen takes f6, rook. I, I want to play even rook e5, but this is all pretty interesting. Um, also, uh, just just uh, you know, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes d4. Five is probably objectively the best. Uh, but overall. Um, interesting. Uh, in terms of improvements for white, uh, I think it was a pretty solidly played game. Um, this g3 was not liked by the engine. Uh, the g th basically the engine was pushing for the b3 uh, undermining of this queen side structure immediately. G3 makes sense to me. I think you can hold off on b3. Um, and then here, you know, once the game has sort of shifted and black has committed to castling kingside, here I think you can launch a a kingside attack that will work well for you. 
Uh, most of your pieces are faced towards the king side. The queen side's locked up, but not particularly vulnerable. Um, and uh, I think you can just push with uh, uh, your knights and this uh, your knights and um, rook and knight pawns, uh, and get this king side to be open and you know generate a successful attack. Um, that's what I would uh, that's what I would advocate in this position. Um, there's a few other tactical imperfections here, um, but then you basically get bailed out with uh, with the queen taking the bishop. But I think I think you had a great idea. I think moving, you know, basically moving things towards the king side um, once the queen side was was solid and and pretty much not vulnerable. Um, I think moving towards the queen side was or moving towards the king side was a good idea. Uh, you got a lot of action uh, on it, the king side quickly, um, and uh, and then uh, black basically um, makes an error and you get to take uh, the bishop on h5. So overall, good game. Um, I would I, I guess my, my main, the two main points that I'd look at are whether or not you wanted to undermine that um, that queenside pawn structure immediately with b3 um, uh, as opposed to playing the g3 Bishop g2 route um, and the other one uh, I guess I would say um, you know uh, when should you start the attack on the king side uh, and I think it might have been a good idea to start the attack on the king side even earlier like maybe even as early as move 14. Uh, I think that you know you can officially say that the king side attack started on about move. I don't know. It's definitely started by move twenty-five, and I guess maybe it's sort of started. Yeah, I I mean it takes a while. Uh, you know I I think you know you could have definitely started the king side attack a few moves earlier. Um, I don't really know if anything was gained by uh, by spending this uh, tempo. Um, uh, on this queen side, I think if you were ever under pressure there, you could just sort of lock it up. Uh, here, you know, you've played a few moves and it is locked up, which is great. But um, uh, but I don't think I think you could have uh, gotten some some tempo on the king side first. Um, so overall, very interesting game. Uh, thank you all very much for sending um uh, the games to me. I really appreciate it. Please keep sending them. Um, thank you for being here, and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you um, at the stream tonight. Tonight we have a stream at 6.05 p.m. Eastern, uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being here. Um, have a good day, everyone. Bye. Thanks.